welcome back to the rest of the story. Yes, I'm still fighting a cold. <clears throat> I'm only got about half my voice here. But I'm really not much for doing tutorials on how to operate machinery, but a question I've been getting an awful lot here lately is to explain what all these controls and levers and everything else over here are. Because people are wondering what I'm doing when I'm talking to you guys while I'm driving down the road or through the field. So, let's just start with the basics and work from there. First and foremost, you got your throttle. Very simple. Push the head for uh, going faster, revving the engine up. Engine up. I pull it back, to slow the engine down. What everyone has typically been asking is, what is this lever for? This is my shifting lever. This tractor is equipped with a 19-speed power shift transmission, <clears throat> as indicated right here. Now what power shift means is that to shift from, well really you can shift through all the gears without having to hit the clutch at all if you know what you're doing. Uh, you literally can go from park to neutral and neutral just means that there's nothing holding the tractor in place but it's not in gear to go forward or backwards so you can basically freewheel don't typically do this very often but seems how we don't have one uh, what i've been told is those ag baggers people you generally almost always you have to put them in neutral uh, so they're able to move forward as the ag bag is getting filled up um, when i'm going up and down the road you guys will see me you can hear it click between the gears and the tractor is shut off by the way just anybody that's wondering um going from First to 11th gear, uh, the tractor will shift up through the gears. If you go from zero to, what was that, 14th gear, um, the tractor will automatically go to 11th gear, but then from there, it'll shift up through the gears. Uh, safety feature, I'm imagining, imagine in the, in the transmission, uh, it's basically price so you don't kill it. So... That's just my experience of running it with reverse. I hardly ever go above second gear in reverse because anything above second gear, you're really cooking. And nine times out of ten, when I am backing up, it's either up to a wagon or back into the machine shed. And you really don't want me going too quick in instances like that. So, something else that is kind of hidden back behind this lever here which you tend to hold on to this quite a bit when you're shifting all it is is just a handle to hold on to or to rest your arm on um, but back here is your mechanical front wheel drive engage or disengage switch nine times out of ten or basically as often as i can get away with i run it with the front wheel assist off um, the front wheels, when that is engaged, they pull, they turn gradually faster, just slightly ahead of the rear wheels. So as the tractor is moving, the front wheels are working ever so slightly to pull the machine. Um, the front wheels are not completely synced up with the rear wheels, so they turn at the same rate as the rear wheels. Um, they do gradually they pull just slightly faster than the, than the rear wheels. So they turn slightly faster than the rear, rear wheels. Uh, another sit, uh, oh, setting on the switch here. This is off all the way back. Pushing it to the middle setting is having your mechanical front wheel drive on all the time. What that means is that no matter what you do, the front wheel assist is going to stay on no matter what you push the brakes in they're not going to disengage you put the left brake on the right brake on nothing like that it will stay engaged no matter what um, also i do believe that once you get above eight miles an hour it'll stay on regardless let me get to that now if anybody can actually see this because i'm working off limited lighting here um, the last setting and the most common setting most people would generally use is the auto setting. Auto means that there's a set parameter that the front end will 
be engaged. So under, I believe it, it's eight and a half miles an hour, the front wheel assist will stay engaged. Anything above that, it automatically shuts itself off to reduce the chances of damaging the front end. Because as I just said, um, that is gradually, the front wheels are gradually turning just slightly more than the rear wheels on any given rotation. So like going down the road and road gear with the front wheel assist turned on or mechanical front wheel drive, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to tear up your front end. How I know this is because our 7400, that came from the factory uh, with the wrong gear put in on the front end. We destroyed the front end, I think it was three or four times. And by the last time, Grandpa said some colorful wor words to him and friendly told them that they could keep it, uh, the dealership, after they got done fixing it. Well, we got a John Deere rep down here, and what they come to find out was exactly what I told you. Um, when this tractor, when the rear wheels make one full rotation, um, the front wheels are making two full rot full rotations to the rear wheels one. So that was twice as much as I believe that it was supposed to be. I, It's been a while, guys, but um, I think these are supposed to turn, uh, what is it, like one, one or one and a half revolutions compared to the rear wheels. Uh, I, I can't quite remember right off the top of my head, but I definitely know that that's what the problem we had with our 7400 was. Um, the front end was constantly, whenever the front end was engaged, was constantly trying to pull the whole tractor. <laughs> I mean, that it wouldn't take very long for the front end to get destroyed in situations like that, especially when we were using it for loader work. That's typically when it went out was when we were hauling bales with it. We had a bale off the front and a hay, uh, hay bale hanging off the back, and that was really hard on the front end. Moving on. <clears throat> Man, this is hard in my voice. The three levers here are your selective control valves, also known as your hydraulics. Depends on who you are and how you like to say. Um, right now, they are set where this is one direction, another direction. I mean, there is no right or wrong way to have these set up and uh, anybody that's been watching our channel long enough knows that we like to have it so when we pull back it raises any of the implements that we're running like the chisel plow the disc bind anything like that and when you push it ahead it'll drop it there are some people in this world i learned that up at school that it was actually more or less common and john deere originally saw that as um when they really first started doing the hydraulics is that they really intended for it to be backwards from what most people would prefer. Um, they really expected forward to be for the implement to raise and backward forward to drop down. It's entirely on preference. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It's mainly just what you have ingrained in your head. So like running the disc bind, I've ran it on this tractor and the 7400 was so similar to this one that I have a set way that I want the hydraulics set and I'm pretty certain everybody gets to be like that. Um, everything from cutting hay to raking to chopping to tillage to planting, it's just the way it is. Now, there's another setting here called float or detent, whatever you want to say. And what happens is, is that when you push this lever all the way ahead, it opens up the SCV and it allows hydraulic oil from the implement to freely flow in and out of the selective control valves. Um, that is used primarily when we do it. On the two instances, uh, instances that I can say that we use that on is on the comb on the corn planter uh, with uh, the uh, marker arms. Um, ideally, you're supposed to raise them up and drop them down, but when you drop them down, you put it to detent to allow the marker arms to free float on the, on the ground, so you're not forcing them down into the dirt. Um, also, with uh, disc binding, disc binding, cutting hay, with our 735 MoCo, it does have the um, hydraulically adjusted cutter bar, and with that, I tend to put it to float because it gives you a little bit more of a... A little bit more of control over it when you drop the disc bind down because when you push it to float the disc bind will drop down on the ground right away and then once the disc bind cylinders for the wheels are all the way on the ground then the cutter bar would start to drop that came in really handy comes in really handy when i'm trying not to cut 
the stubble um, or the product, the material, um, right down to the ground because a disc bind will cut closer to the ground than your lawnmower. So, like in grass, uh, when we're doing the first or second cutting of grass, I usually try to leave it a little bit taller um, so it does grow back a little bit quicker for a following up cutting. And then the last cutting, I shave it right down to the ground. Um, this button right here, or toggle switch, what do you want to call it, dial, depends on who you are. Um, that is for your draft control. So what it is, is that when you're doing an imp uh, a job like a, a three-point pull plow or something, or chisel plowing, um, when it gets to a certain point, depending on how you have this set, if there's so much pressure to a, any given point on the rear um, draft link arms, uh, what happens is, is that this will sense that and it'll pick them up gradually, like if you're getting into a harder soil or a um, little bit more compaction, it keeps the keeps the implement from bogging down the tractor. Uh, Self-explanatory right here, this is the power takeoff. These are your creature comforts. We got your uh, fan speed, we got your vents, which ones you want turned on. Then we got your hot and cold air and then your air conditioner switch to turn on your AC or not. Um, something we don't use around here would be the ashtray, um, phone plug, or cigarette lighter. We use that for our phones. Um, rear windshield wiper. And the last little item on the command arm here, the console, um, is your three-point control. These buttons down here, this is to raise and this is to lower your three-point arms. It'll raise it to the set height. Um, back in here... If it's, yeah, it's kind of dark. Um, this toggle right here, it's, you can set how high you want the, the rear arms to raise and lower. And this one over here is to control the speed that your arms will, will drop. Um, also, last but not least, this controls how far your, your throw, the three point arms will drop. Um, if you don't want to go all the way down, Say if you got a blade on the back or, oh gosh, what else? Um, well, even if you got like a, a bale spear on the back where it's completely three-point mounted and you don't want to drop all the way down to the ground. Say you only want it to drop halfway down. You set set that right there. And then when you hit this drop button, um, the three-point arms will drop to the set point where this is at. And you have to watch out the back end to see where it will drop down to. Um, this lever, this dial, all it does is it allows you to move um, this setting right here. It's just another way to, it's like a pre-setting. See, because you can drop your your control lever down to that point. It won't let me push it past it. I mean, that's just another way to, it's like a preset setting. Anybody else has any other opinions as to what that is used for, go right ahead and say it in the comments because that's what I use it for. So... Uh, to keep this from getting too overly long, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, hope that kind of clears up some of your questions as far as what I'm doing over here when I'm talking to you guys. I guess when I get to talking to the camera like I typically do, I generally don't think of what I'm doing over here because it's just, at this point in my life, it's really just habit. I can operate this tractor without having to think about what I'm doing. You just do it. So. Any other questions, feel free to ask. The radio, another creature comfort that I can almost do without anymore. I do listen to, or I connect my phone to it more than anything else. But other than that, I think that's it for the 7600. If you guys are satisfied with this video, maybe I'll do one on the 4640 and the 8235. Well, I guess in the combine in the 4022 if you guys are really interested. But with that, I'm going to put the tractor back in park. So take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later.